evening. Uh, welcome back to the Lansdowne Elementary uh, Boundary Change Committee. This is meeting three. Tonight, uh, we are going to review some of the information from last meeting and some of the questions you had. Uh, you developed uh, 10 draft options, so you're going to have a chance to review those and look at the information on those. Uh, we're going to perform um, an ev option evaluation exercise to try to narrow those options down from 10 to, we're hoping, uh, usually committees take about three or four to the public information session. Uh, we're going to do a sticker exercise that lets you vote to try to narrow and come to a consensus on the, uh, the um, options that you would like to move forward as well. And then um, we're going to have a little discussion on that and we'll talk a little bit about what the public information session is and what to expect during that. Uh, last meeting, uh, there was a question on uh, the farms rates and why they're so uh, why they were lower than what you were expecting. And basically, um, we're still looking into this, but generally, it's um, farms rates change throughout the year, and it's about when those rates are captured in our information. Um, so last time, when you made the when you were working and developing the ten options. Uh, this is the information that you're going to have available to you tonight for all 10 options for when you're reviewing them. You're going to have information on the, you have the state rate of capacity, the utilization, uh, the over under, uh, the percent minority, percent um, farms, and the percent English language learners. You'll also have, uh, what you didn't have last week, is the the number of students moved between schools, so the students impacted on those moves, so the totals of where they're going, um, and the actual walk, the changes in the walk numbers is also in your materials tonight. Uh, this is an important update that we wanted to let you know. Um, so Lansdowne, with the added capacity at Lansdowne Elementary, we looked at this as a great opportunity to add programs, um, so the needed special education programs and uh, early childhood programs. And we wanted to take advantage of this opportunity. So uh, we are anticipating about 30 students would attend these programs. Uh, and so what we did tonight is in your meeting materials, um, you'll have in each of the statistics, you'll have, you'll have two, col or two um, sets of information for utilization and the over-unders. The top one will be based on the 709. Uh, capacity, which is what you developed your scenarios on prior to the program placement, and then you'll have a modified number at the bottom for, um, which will be 679, which backs out the 30 seats that we would like to hold for the program placement. So you'll be able to see the utilization for Lansdowne with the 30 seats taken out. So it will help inform your selection better. Uh, tonight, um, like I said earlier, we're going to do two exercises to try to narrow down to uh, ultimately around uh, three or four is what's typically taken to the public information session. Uh, we're going to, um, and then we would like you to work together to identify common thoughts on these and reasons why you're narrowing. So when you get up here to talk about why you're selecting what options, um, you know, try to tell us um, what objectives, what considerations that those meet. Um, Ms. Bell is going to go over the first exercise. Thanks. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, so before we kind of jump in, I just want to review the boundary study objectives, um, the lens that you're using to um, come up with your um, different options and even evaluate the options that you've come up with. So. Um, one is reducing overcrowding in the region. Um, the other is to create viable, successful boundaries to effectively utilize the added capacity at Lansdowne Elementary School and the other schools involved in the study. And then lastly is to su support diversity among the schools um, that reflects the community and the school system um, as a whole. So like last time, oh, um, the options that you're looking at today, um, nothing's set in stone. Um, new options can be created, although it is the goal of today for us to kind of narrow it down. But nonetheless, um, you know, new options can be created. Um, and then focus isn't on picking the best solution yet, but to openly explore the various options to present to the public for feedback. 
So again, um, in terms of how you're going to evaluate each option, you're going to study the geography. So looking at the shape of the current, and, um, current boundary when compared to the option boundary, you're going to evaluate roads and networks, which you've been doing this entire time. Um, and you're going to look at how school buses and parents would travel to school, et cetera. You're going to study the tables, so looking at the balance of enrollment, um, considering the um, future projected enrollment, and also considering um, program expansion. And then lastly, again, just considering how each of the options um, support the boundary study objectives and considerations. Okay, so you're already in your two groups. And so what we're gonna do, or what you all are gonna do, is you're gonna look at the 10 um, options. And <clears throat> um, you'll see a chart on your, on, your, um, on your table. So actually, I think I wanna just, let me just skip forward, because this works a little better for me. So you're gonna evaluate each of um, the 10 options, and you're gonna indicate using the crayons whether the option meets the particular um, standard or um, boundary study considerations. So now I can go back. So um, we want you to use color coding. So red would indicate that um, the objective is poorly met. Yellow would indicate that it's fairly met. And then green would indicate that it's met well. Um, after you've looked at each of the options, then as a group, you're gonna come to consensus on the top three, okay? Even if you already have your favorites, still just take the time to look at all 10 um, of the options just to look, weigh the pros and cons. Okay. Um, really quickly, um, I just wanna review, wow, the boundary study considerations. So you're looking at efficient use of capacity in the affected schools. You're looking at um, the, continue, um, the continuation of neighborhoods. You're looking at maintaining or increasing the diversity among schools. Um, you're looking at the impact of transportation. Everything is basically laid out on the chart. Um, you're gonna analyze the long-term enrollment um, and capacity trends and future capital plans, of which there are none. Um, and then the final two considerations are just the ability to accommodate early childhood and special education expansion. And then lastly, looking at the geographic features, okay? Um, we're gonna give you about 30 minutes to work together and then we'll share out um, after that time. Any questions? Okay, fantastic, thanks.
Um, so it looks like everybody's kind of wrapping up. We're going to give you about um, three minutes or so, or five, to um, pick your top three options, and then just decide um, who's going to come up and, and speak about speak about it, okay?
Okay. All right. So let's um, get ready to, to share out. We're going to um, hear from this group first. So. so we really looked at all of the criteria and chose the two that we felt were most important overall um, after we looked at each and rated them. Um, and one of the things that we looked at as being really important was maintaining or increasing the diversity among the schools to reflect the diversity of the region. And the other part was the efficient use of the capacity and the affected schools. And we, used the and we used the revised numbers to look at this. So the two um, options that we felt best fit that criteria were options four and eight. Anybody else from the group want to add anything before we move on? Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, the options after our review that we decided on based on the efficient capacity of the school um, and which option fit the most categories were options two, three, and six. We decided for option two that the most needs were met um, option three m would have more bus kids, and then option six, more of the English speakers, or English language speakers would move. Thank you. Did anybody want to add anything? Okay. All right, great. Did you have anything? So, so before we move on to the next exercise, um, I just want to make sure everybody is okay with um, Removing, I guess we're just going to put up four, two, three, four, six, and eight up here for the next exercise. Okay. Does anybody have anything? I mean, does anybody want to bring any other ones or have any comments? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. So while they're removing um, some of the um, options, um, the next exercise that we're going to engage in is actually an independent um, exercise. So you're going to look at the, um, the options, not all 10. Now we have six, correct? Okay. Five. Okay. So you're going to consider um, individually the five options that are left. And what we're going to ask you to do, um, you're going to be given three stickers. And we're asking that you put, <coughs> um, each member should place one sticker per option, right? So we're asking you to vote with your, with your sticker. You don't have to use all your stickers. If you just like one, use one. If you like two, use two. If you like three, use three. Um, it says after about 20 minutes, I don't know if it will take that long, but after everyone is finished, we'll come back and discuss the results. And then we can determine um, if other options can be removed and um, which ones we want to bring to the public information session. Um, principals may not participate in the placement of the stickers, but the follow-up conversation that we have, you are able to engage in that discussion, okay? Any questions? Okay. Um, Chris, when, when you've made up um, your mind, Chris has the stickers, you're just gonna sign them out with, with him, and then you can um, place your stickers on, on the map that you vote for, the draft option. Yeah, what are the options again? Two, two, three, four, I can see, sorry, six and eight. <laughs> yeah, two, three, four, six, eight, okay? All right.
Okay, there we go. Um, so now just briefly, I want to explain why we gave you the little ActiVote um, handheld things. In the past when we've done this, um, we've, we've struggled to figure out a good way to be able to get consensus among um, the committee on which uh, options to take to the next, um, to the public meeting. So that's what, that's what they're for. And so to kind of make sure this works, we're just going to run a quick sample question and see if this works. Um, so I'm new to, to Maryland and Baltimore, so I'm learning how some of these things work. Um, so what I want to just quickly do, so how, how this will work, um, if you haven't used one of these before, so when I press this green um, circle here, then this will come up and says vote now. Um, and so you guys go ahead, let's see, is this guy in the way here? Um, we'll stop, let's see here. And you vote for whichever one you want, um, your Maryland crab, your cream of crab, your half and half, or your salad for, for your choice of side. So go ahead, I guess there'll be six of them that'll, that'll pop in. If we did this right, hopefully we'll have, have six. So then um, we'll say we'll do a countdown. Um, where'd it go? There we go. And then four, three, two, one, sometimes. Sometimes we'll just stop it. Um, no. And then, so this shows how our, oh, sh okay. So that's good, so we got those. I'll have to adjust the setting real quick as we go that to make sure we get our, um, our percentage is right, but if we go our um, text report, that'll show we had um, three, one and one. So we had, so what is that, four, five, so one didn't vote. Then we had six out. Do you want to, let, let's try that again real quick and make sure. I thought we, we tested them all. Let, let's test it again. So everyone go ahead and, yes, yeah, so let's do A, B, C, or D. All right, let's go ahead and stop it, see if we got it this time. There we go. Good job. All right, so that's just to pretend, just to kind of get, make sure all our devices are working right. So now Melanie will walk you through the exercises and um, we'll uh, see how we did. Okay, um, so now what we want to do is um, look at each draft option. And it's an opportunity for you to share um, just kind of like your logic, why, why you put the sticker there. And then it's an opportunity for us to decide whether or not we want to take it to um, the, um, the next meeting to present um, to the public, okay? So um, I see that option four has one sticker. Um, does anybody want to share anything about option four, like if you were the person who, who put the sticker here? Okay. I really just looked at the utilization of the school um, and how the, ba I mean, it really didn't change um, the farms that much. It kind of maintained where the schools currently were with changing the utilization. That's why I chose that option. Did anybody want to respond to what you heard? Okay. Um, so typically, um, if an option has like a lower number of votes, what we ask is if we can take this off the table. Um, so this is option four. Yeah, so we want you to, you ready? To um, cast your vote now as to can we take this off the table? A being yes, B being no, let's leave it in. Okay, very simple, all right. Um, should I just take this off? You got it? Okay. And so let's see. So the next option um, that has two stickers is option eight. Does anybody want to speak to um, your reasoning or logic for option eight? Let me, let me come over to you so we can hear you. Option eight out of all the options did the best at balancing some of the demographics, um, the ESOL population, the minority population um, between the three schools um, and didn't really have any of the negatives. It was, you know, a, a fairly efficient use of schools, um, you know, as much as it could maintain the continuity of communities. Um, so the strength with that one was that it really balanced some of the um, demographics. I just wanted to share that I agree with all of her points. <laughs> all right, any other thoughts about um, option eight? 
the only major negative that I think came up in our conversation about eight was um, the farms change. Um, having basically Baltimore Highlands and Lansdowne swap balance with how many more kids. So our farms rate would go up, plus we'd be getting more students, whereas Brian's and Baltimore Highlands would go down and they'd have less students would severely impact the amount of money going to each school uh, to support the program. So um, we just felt that that would be a pretty sizable, measurable impact on what's going on in the building day to day um, that we thought it was a, it, that was a pretty big concern. Thank you. So, okay. So again, um, since option eight has two, um, two votes, we wanna take a vote now um, as to whether or not we can take this um, off the table for the public information session. So again, A is yes, we can take it off the table. B is no, let's leave it. Okay. Okay. So what do we do? Um, I think it's okay to leave up there for now. Um, I, and I guess the, yeah. Just okay, so, so yeah, we'll keep it on the table. Um, I will say what we like to do is um, we typically bring three to f three options. Three to four options. Okay, three to four. So <laughs> this, this shouldn't be, um, shouldn't be a major um, issue. So um, option two, three, and um, option six, have four votes. So I'll just start with option six. Um, does anybody want to speak to um, the rationale behind option six? Um, option six also did a um, fairly decent job at um, balancing the minority populations between the schools. Um, as well as some of the Esau populations. That was part of the rationale for number six. Other thoughts? Okay, we're gonna keep it very short and sweet then. So, so mm -hmm. okay, so um, are they, I'm sorry, are they voting for number six or for all? No, so this is the six and the other two four. Okay, all right, great. So given that it's um, evenly balanced, we're just gonna vote on, are we, are we good with taking all four of these to the public information session, okay? So. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead, can you, can you run it again and get all six? It is great. All right. Do we have a follow up? Um, yes. Okay. So, uh, no, I just need the slideshow. Okay, so uh, next Thursday, so this is the one difference in our meeting schedule. It's not a Wednesday night, it's a Thursday. So next Thursday, we will have the public information session here um, in the cafeteria. So the format for that is, it's more uh, like a gallery walk. Um, we'll have stations set up with the four maps that you selected to take on to the public information session. And uh, we would let, and you will be answering questions um, the community will be able to come in and ask you questions about the option and um, you'll have your information and you can answer questions and take comments from them. They can give you feedback on what they think um, to help you when you get to your um, recommendation. So you can listen to all their comments. There will also be a survey that's launched that evening um, and that will be available in uh, Spanish and Burmese as well. That will run through to, uh, I think it's, I'll have to 
think it's till November 2nd, um, but I can send that out. Um, that will run for about, it's about two weeks, but we will have computers here that evening um, to, um, for people to vote on it that evening. And we're asking that you get here around 6.30 so we can go over a little bit about, uh, a little bit more about what to expect, questions to answer, and that type of thing. Does anybody have any questions about what to expect? Okay, so um, we'll re, um, instead of numbers now, they'll become A, B, C, and D when we go into the public information session. Okay, and all of this stuff will be posted tomorrow on the website, all of your recommend, uh, your options. Go ahead. Yes, there'll be a map and then there'll be the statistics next to it. Yes, so all four will have a, the map and then the um, statistics, all the statistics that you had available below of them. Okay, so uh, on Friday with the reminder email, I sent out a, you have um, a copy of the media advisory and then you have a flyer as well. Um, we, you can distribute that to the community. That can be sent out by the principals in the email blasts. Um, there's a link there also that you can send out to your community. Um, the calls, uh, we'll be providing a message that the principals can use to send out calls to their community and to the school. Um, and that will also, the calls uh, will be available in um, Spanish as well. Um, and um, the media advisory is also being um, translated into Spanish and we'll make that available as soon as it's um, finished. Any other questions? We were just discussing there really is no impact on Riverview in any of the options, so we weren't really sure how much our community would participate in you know the process i mean it's not none of the options affect them well i mean if they feel that they should um be involved they can come and they can express that as as their concern because these are not the final options so if you hear, hear feedback from your community or um concerns from your community you can then address them when you come back that's you know the point so if they have concerns they can express them there at the public information station or in the survey So I guess we will see everyone next Thursday at 6.30. Also, um, dinner is not provided at the public information sessions. Okay. In the meantime, if you have any questions or concerns, just um, email me or you can contact us then. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night.